Hey Pfingsters and welcome to this uh, tutorial where I want to try something out. So this video will be very different. So I just googled some Python stuff like Python list comprehension and so uh, googled different things and then suddenly I got uh, from Google I got a pop-up so when, when, when googling this Google sent me a pop-up and uh, asked me whether I, w I would be interested in solving a few um, like coding problems. Yeah and um, uh, then I could click yes, no, or don't show them, show me this again, okay? And I have already heard of something like this that Google tries to uh, to get some employees by asking like coders uh, to um, to solve some problems on the fly. So I click yes, and now I landed on this page. I haven't seen anything else. I haven't done anything else. I just switched on screen recording, and now let's let's try to to do this uh, together <laughs> okay so but I have to read I mean I'm slow I just doing it I just see it the first time as you okay so now let's solve Google's problems what do they want okay so mounting home guest Google has a code challenge ready for you success you've managed to infiltrate commander Landa's evil organization and finally earned yourself an entry-level position as a minion on her space station from here you just might be able to subvert her plans to use the lamp job doomsday device to destroy bunny planet problem is minions are the lowest of the low in the lambda hierarchy better buck up and get working or you will never make it to the top warning your invitation may expire if you leave this page sign in to save progress and resume later <clears throat> for a list of commands type help to get started with your first challenge type request so let's let's type help just try to play with this Okay, we have uh, like shell commands. We have like it's normal shell commands. Yeah, Linux shell commands like cd change directory cat. We can print a file. We can delete me. Delete all of your data associated with Uber. We can edit. Open a file in editor. We can do feedback less ls request request a new challenge. <laughs> this is uh, like um, I would say it's a Google way of um, uh, yeah, letting us to actively start the challenge. Then we have the print progress and we submit the final solution for the assessment. Then we have some run, runs test on solution file. Toggle between the editor and terminal using escape, followed by tab, then activate with enter. Okay, so these are just commands. Let's, let's type request and see what happens. You're about to begin a time-limited challenge, which you will have 48 hours to complete. Okay, it's 48 hours. I cannot, I cannot maybe in screen, I cannot give you the full 48 hours. Probably I also won't work that long. Maybe I will only work 10, 15 minutes because I want to do some other stuff today as well. Okay, um, if you don't do not have time for the challenge now, you may sign in to save your place and return later. To request a challenge. Do you wish to proceed and start with your first challenge? Let's click sign in. What happens here? Verify that's you. Okay, let's just sign in. Enter your password. Let's ha let's see what happens if we if I sign in. Okay, now I'm signed in as xcent.py, which is my like username for Google. Um, Okay, so let's let's request the challenge again. I want to know the challenge now. <laughs> request. Yes. Requesting challenge. Okay, new Commander Lambda sure is a taskmaster, isn't she? You're being worked to the bone. New challenge, re-ID added to your home folder. Time to solve, 48 hours. So let's check my home folder. Okay, if you click LS, it's for uh, like list this, the files in the di directory. Uh, we have a new file, re-ID. Okay, then we also have journal text and uh, start here text. And um, good, so let's get re-ID. This seems to be the channel. Maybe I just I just prefer before that I want to know what is in in the start here folder cat start here okay so this is a start here file uh, contains the text type request to request a challenge type help for a list of command okay this we already know what is in the journal
Okay, good journal is uh, like my current task, I, I would say. Okay, so let's uh, start my current task. Success, you've managed to infiltrate Commander Landa's evil organization, and so on, yeah. Um, and finally, earned yourself an entry level position as a minion, and so on. Okay, so this was the challenge. So let's type, uh, let's see, re ID. Ah, re ID is the directory, so we cd into re ID, and now we are in the directory re ID, and Let's see a solution. So we have a Java code, solution Java code. We have some constraints, readme file, and a solution in Python code. Okay, let's start with the readme file. Yeah, <laughs> any good code projects you should start with the readme file. Okay. Um, wow, it's a quite large readme file. Okay, there are some unrest. There's some unrest in the minion uh, ranks. Minions with ID numbers like 1, 42, and other good numbers have been lording it over the poor minions who are stuck with more boring IDs. Okay, so if you have a good uh, ID number, then then you you don't you are like have a special position in the minion rank hierarchy. To quell the unrest, Commander Lambda has tasked you with reassigning everyone new random IDs based on her completely full foolproof scheme. Okay, so we want to have Commander has tasked you with reassigning everyone new random IDs. She's concatenated the prime numbers in a single long string. Okay, we have a uh, long string of all prime numbers. Now every minion must draw a number from a head. That number is the starting index in that string of primes. Okay, so we have a, a like an, some number, starting number, and the minion's new ID number will be the next five digits in the string. Okay, so we select the position randomly in the string and now the uh, next five um, um, five prime numbers from this in from this index will be the ID of a, of a new minion member. So if a minion draws three, their ID will be number... So three is like position three, this is position zero. One, two, three. And the next five numbers is this one. Okay, so this, if they draw the number three, the index three, then this one will be his new um, uh, ID. Help the commander assign these IDs by writing a function solution n, which takes in the starting index n of lambda's string of all primes and returns the next five digits in the string. Commander lambda has a lot of minions, so the value of n will always have. Uh, will always be between 0 and 10,000. Okay, um, so languages to provide a Java, Java solution, added solution Java to provide a Python solution, added solution.py. Test cases, and we have some test cases, and um, yeah, we can check them later. Okay, so um, yeah, use verify file to test your solution and see how it does. When you are finished, Editing your code, use submit file to submit your answer. If your solution passes the test case, it will be removed from your home folder. Okay, and the test cases are like in Python, we have input. Uh, so if so if we call solution solution zero, then our output will be two, three, five, seven, eight, which are the like first five prime numbers. If it is three, then we will have this output. Okay, so it's a actually it's a very simple, um, very simple request. Um, Good, so let's edit um, solution.py. So, which editors do we have here? Um, open file in the editor. Okay, so we simply call edit um, solution.py. Okay, so now our code needs to go here. So now we need to, def we need to do some... Um, Okay, so our, our number i is the index of our prime sequence. Now we need to determine the prime sequence, okay? Determine prime sequence. And um, our prime sequence, so we start, so we have a string of values. We start with the empty string. And now, um, so we need to have a string method. So you should not do premature optimization. Of course, there are, there are very advanced techniques for, um, for finding fi finding prime numbers, um, for example, the um, sieve of uh, Eratosthenes. It's very it's an efficient way of finding prime numbers. But uh, of course, we can also have like a very uh, simple method for 
for prime for uh, finding prime numbers okay so like let's um code for prime numbers i mean i could come up with some code myself but probably it will be worse than one i just get okay but let's let's maybe let's determine the prime sequence um should we create a, so a function for this makes sense right um so uh let's let's call it like this primes get prime numbers okay so say we have a function here get prime numbers def get prime numbers and then we have maybe have a uh, um, number n which is like the maximum number returns the prime numbers up to n okay so this is this is like uh, this is what our function should should do and we can have a return none something like this so this we will implement in a moment uh, but first we determine the prime number sequence and this is now this is now uh, a list say it's a list so we need to um, join it right we want to join the list of values into into a string okay and now we have a string of prime numbers this is what we want to uh, see if you if you scroll up okay now we have this string of prime numbers here and we want to have like so the value of n will always be between 0 and 10,000 okay so the value of n will always be between 0 and 10,000 and uh, the number n is the um, is it the maximum number of minions, right? Function solution n. Okay, so n. Uh, this one will be. Uh, so we will have at, at we will have at least ten thousand um, positions. Okay, let's let's maybe then just we just we pass this. Uh, okay, we we will change it a bit. We simply pass this value of uh, that they call n here in the text, but it's actually uh, i. They call it i in the code. And now we want to return so basically returns the then maybe we just, we simply return a string this this makes more sense uh, okay we return a string value so we go over basically it returns a string of prime numbers up to i positions okay then we create an empty string like the empty string and now we have a uh, while length of s is smaller than i no than 10000 basically up to 10k positions not i positions because we have at maximum we have 10k positions right so, uh, so she's concatenated prime numbers in a single long string it's a very long string and the um every uh, then you you have a you write a, a function solution n which takes in the starting index n of lambda string of all primes and returns the next five digits in the string and n will be at most 10000 okay ten, at most 10000 but then we still need to have to add some more positions because um because we because we need to obtain the next five positions okay so so if you have like 1005 uh, 10005 elements in uh, or characters in our string then if we access the character with index 10000 then we take the next five one so we have 10000 10001 2 no 10000 10001 10002 10003 10004 actually so the, the length so the last index would be 10004 but the length sh should then be 10005 because we start counting with zero okay so while our length is smaller than 10005 we simply add um, add new add new prime, okay? So something like this. We will we will check it for, uh, in a moment, but I will first have the high level high level uh, structure um, add new prime to s. I will first have the high level structure. Okay, solution i. Now we have the sorry we have the prime numbers up to a certain point and um, up to a certain like maximum number uh, i. And now let's move on. Okay, determine prime sequence, and we should now return the ID 
of a certain minion. Okay, and this is now really easy because now we return. Um, um, now we simply return the primes i from i to i plus five excluded. Okay, so we start with index i and we end in index i plus five excluded, which means that we have like five elements with position i, position i plus one, i plus two, i plus three, and i plus four. So five elements, i plus five will not be included anymore. So we have five characters in our um, returned string. And this is now the, this is the integer. Okay, so if you have, like if you put in sol solution zero, then we will have these five, five numbers here. If you uh, put in sol solution three, then we will have another one. Okay, and your code should, should it be, now I just ask myself, should it be the return value a string or should it be an integer? Now every mini must draw a number from a head. That number is the starting index in that string of primes and the mini's new ID number will be the next five digits in the string. So it's digits in the string. So I guess the return value will be a um, string. So it's fine if you use slicing without converting it to a number, I guess. Okay, so now the only thing left is to uh, determine like for a given, determine the, a, a, a prime number. Um, Okay, now we need to add a new prime. So we have like the, how can we get from, from a prime number? How can we get to the next prime number? So I, I know that I know like a very, very crude approach is to, to have uh, um, like to go over each possible the, um, uh, a number that is smaller than the number to be searched, whether to be checked, whether it is a prime number and try to divide this larger number by all the smaller numbers and if it is possible without uh, without remainder then we add it otherwise we add, we don't add it it's a very crude approach i know but um uh, so we should we should maybe have a yeah but why not i mean why should why shouldn't we maybe it's very inefficient for 10000 elements right to So let's let's check the code uh, Wikipedia. You don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel. Okay, so here's a sieve of Eratosthenes, which is like yeah, it's it's a, it's one of the easiest sieves to implement. I want to have a very like simple algorithm that is also not too bad. Generation and this. Uh, I even I even uh, wrote a program for it myself. Let's check out the sieve, <laughs> sieve of Eratosthenes. Okay, there's even a one-liner solution. <laughs> it's a very good um, opportunity to make some um, uh, advertisement for my new book, Python One-liners. I wrote a, uh, in one line of Python the, the, an algorithm to check whether a number is prime. So um, yeah, here we have a here we have a checker. So this is like the trivial approach. We have a prime number. Uh, this, by the way, my blog, so I think it's fine to copy from myself uh, for this. Um, okay, so uh, so we have a prime number, we put in some number n, and then we go over all numbers that are smaller than n. If n is um, n mod modulo y equals zero, which means that we can divide n by y without remainder, then we return false, otherwise we return true. Otherwise we have found a prime number. And then, of course, we can test it for all numbers and just increase the numbers um, until we reach uh, reach that point, okay. So this 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 prime number checker we can uh, we can we can use. And now, if you want to find all all prime numbers that are smaller than m, then we use the simple list comprehension to go over all values. Um, yeah, to go actually to go over all of those values. But like there's a, a sieve of Eratosthenes that uses the re reduce function. It's quite effective i would say maybe i'll use this i just copy pasted the sieve and um, um, so we need to import the reduce function should i use it <laughs> i know it's not i know it doesn't make a lot of sense to um to do this but ma ma let's maybe first start with the 
with the easier one. I'm a bit unsure if I should do it. I mean, it's it's very efficient and beautiful, and it's just for fun. So let's take it. No, I know. I we need to we need to import the reduce function. I don't like importing stuff for this problem, um, because the reduce function is not built in in uh, Python anymore. It was in Python two, but in Python three it is not built in. Okay, so. Um, So get prime numbers, so we have a prime test. Tests if a number is prime. Okay, so we test if a number is prime. And uh, yeah, now we have, we have uh, this prime test. And it's very simple prime test. I mean, you can write this in uh, very quickly. Ah, okay, and we also have some time here, remaining time. So we have only one hour and thirty minutes for this, uh, for this to to, uh, to solve it, to solve it. Okay, <laughs> but it's plenty of time. I mean, we are almost done. The only diff, the only challenge is for me to decide whether I should use a sieve of Eratosthenes or not. And I have decided that I won't use it for this example. Okay, and um, good. So then we have a. Um, prime number so we need to uh, generate the next prime number how how do we last prime minus 1 so i think i guess the first prime number should be um 2 so last prime 2 okay and then we add s s plus equal so we add to the string the last prime number in each iteration and um, so initially it is so now we need to convert it to a string right so we have a, a number this is the last prime number now we convert this number to a string and we append it to our uh, string actually you cannot append things to a string because strings are immutable so you will create a new string um it's not so efficient if you have a lot of you loop iterations because you have to create a new string again and again and again and again you could also store all the prime numbers in the in a, in a list but then it would be harder to obtain the number of positions we want to uh, have I mean we have 10k plus five positions in our string okay so therefore um, we don't have 10,000 prime numbers but only 10,000 positions which is like an easier problem we don't have to calculate so many prime numbers because I mean later prime numbers have many different positions for a single prime number okay so we convert it to a string and um, the last prime number is an integer and now we need to get the next climb uh, calculate next prime um let's just um call it prime so we have um uh, we we go for So prime, so we increase prime by one, right? Because we start looking at the next number. So we have already checked. If, uh, we already know that prime is a is uh, is a prime number currently, and now we simply increment it by one because we want to find the next prime number. And then we check why um, not prime. Let's not call it. Uh, okay, now I have prime number. Let's call it prime number. We do the re I mean, we really write write bad bad code now. Okay, so we have a function. Now let's go back and let's keep call, calling it prime, and we call this function is prime. I think this is this that makes more sense. It's uh, it's uh, cleaner to 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 use this is prime method because. Um, I think it, it it adheres more to the Python style. It's more Pythonic too. We have a checker that we, we want to return um, 
whether it is a prime on a prime number or not so we return a truth value so is prime is, is a good name for this okay and now we have why not is prime our number prime and um prime e okay so we just simply increase prime by one okay as long as it isn't a prime we we don't uh we simply increase it by one okay and then at one point we will reach the next prime number i mean the pr next prime number is there for sure um it's only about uh, finding it basically okay and now we can um simply return so now at, at this point we have like found the next prime number and now it will enter this um this condition again and it will add the new prime number to so only only if 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 we have like some positions left we need to add another prime number and then we enter the um enter the loop again and we add the new prime number which you have just found to to s again and calculate the next prime and we, we repeat this until we have a string with 10 10 000 positions okay and um okay so at one sooner or later we will we will um, pass this and now what is left is to return the string s okay now here we generate the solution first generates the prime numbers up to point i and um We don't need we don't need to pass this i actually because we i mean we want to determine up to 10 10k plus five positions anyway right okay so this is i think i think it's cleaner that way we don't need the i okay so we get all the prime numbers as a, as a string we store it in variable primes then we use slicing to access the id of the minion and um return this and our prime numbers use the simple prime test while not is prime it simply increases the number by, by one checks for each number whether it is a prime number and if it has found a prime it just appends it to the to the string and then in the end it returns a string if, you, if the string has more than is um has more or equal to 10,005 um characters and um good that's it this should work Let's copy this code and check it one more time. Um, simulate, we don't want to have this. Here we have some code. Code shell, I always have a code shell open. <laughs> okay, now I, um, of course, now we need to execute solution, say solution. So what are the uh, test cases here? We have solution dot solution zero and solution dot solution three. These are the two test cases we want to check. Okay, so we print solution zero and we print solution three. Okay, so it's not the fastest program program ever, <laughs> but I mean it works. No premature optimization needed for ten thousand minions. If you have more minions in the company, then of course we need to do some more uh things okay so here we have three two three five seven uh, one and uh seven one 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 three which are our two test cases two three five seven one and seven one 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 three so we have successfully solved the problem we can save the changes we can uh like close ever everything let's check whether the solution pi has uh okay so the solution pi it is everything is uh, stored nicely here and um now we need to submit the solution how can we sub submit the solution again um we can do, we can call it submit um submit final solution for assessment we submit our file ah, because we can also verify <laughs> this is nice okay we can call verify solution.py verifying solution this is nicely done. It's actually very nicely done. If you want to get a job at Google, um, I don't want to <laughs> actually. But uh, if you want to, if you want to get a job there, then uh, it's. Uh, I think it's a good way to approach it. 
All test cases passed. Use submit solution to submit your solution. Perfect. Then we submit solution.py. And I guess um, I guess they are looking for good solution also. I mean, if you want to increase your chances of getting uh, hired by Google, then you may want to actually implement this C of Eratosthenes algorithm because it's like it's more computers. It's more the it's a nerdier way of doing it actually. Yeah. If you are a true computer scientist, then this may uh, okay, and challenge is left to complete level two. Type request to request the challenge now or come back later. Okay, so we can can come back later. So now we have uh, we, we want to reach the next level next time. Actually, maybe maybe I will create five videos out of it uh, <laughs> for the next five days. Maybe I will come back tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and so on to have these uh, challenges because I, I think these are nice nice videos and maybe you can even learn something about it. So I'm really doing this ad hoc. So I, I don't have any uh, guidance or anything. It's I just saw it the first time. I, I know that some coders get asked this question from other from a few of my friends. Um, so and they got hired in the process later. But um, yeah, I just uh, now I'm just doing it for the, for fun actually. And uh, maybe maybe it helps uh, if I share my thought process with you somehow. Okay, but of course I'm slower, and maybe the harder levels they will be much more strict in terms of your uh, the time requirement that is uh, possible. Okay, but uh, we all we know already know how it how it goes. Okay, we'll come back later uh, tomorrow. Um, leave a comment if you like this video and if it uh, helped uh, you in some way. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.